Hi, welcome. In this video, we're going to be continuing in our journey through Mark's Gospel. Today, our passage is Mark chapter 3, uh, verses 7 to 35. If you want to follow along, there's a link in the video description to an online Bible. Just click it and it will open to the passage that we're looking at today. Are you a fan of Subway, the fast food chain? I have to say it's one of my favourite uh, fast food restaurants to go to. Although I'm always faced with a choice. Do I go for a 6 inch or a 12 inch? 6 inch is never quite enough. A 12 inch is maybe a bit too much. I, I guess if they made a 9 inch that would be just about perfect. Well this week I was reading on the news about a, a court case in Ireland. Where the court ruling said that Subway were no longer allowed to call their bread bread. Evidently, it has just too much sugar in it, so it can't be defined as bread. I didn't know that there were rules about what was bread and what was not. Well, today I want to ask you a question. How do you define a disciple of Jesus? What makes a Christian? What does it mean to be a Christian? Well, in our passage today, Mark answers that question as he contrasts the disciples of Jesus with three other groups of people. And the first thing that he teaches us is that to be a Christian is more than just an interest in Jesus. In verse 8, we're introduced to the crowd that are following Jesus. It reads, When they heard about all he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, and the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre, and Sidon. So Jesus is going around doing miracles and he's teaching and lots of people want to hear him and lots of people want to see him. They're interested in what he's doing. But are they the disciples? No. You see the disciples were more than interested. They also responded to Jesus' call to come and follow him. So to be a disciple is more than being interested in Jesus. And then the second thing that Mark teaches us here is that being a Christian is more than just a knowledge of the Bible. He contrasts the disciples with the teachers of the law. Now the teachers of the law spent a lot of time studying the Old Testament, trying to figure out what it meant. They knew big chunks of it from memory. But yet when they saw Jesus, how did they respond? Verse 22 tells us, and the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebul. By the prince of demons he is driving out demons. Rather than believe that Jesus was from God, they said that he was from the devil. So they knew their Bibles, but they didn't recognise Jesus. Were they disciples? Well, no. Or not at this point anyway. In fact, Jesus saves his hardest statement in this passage for these teachers of the law. In verse 28 and 29, it says, Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. What does that mean? Well, Jesus is saying to these men that they can be forgiven. In verse 28, People can be forgiven all their sins and every slander that they utter. But in verse 29, he says, if you continue in your disbelief, if you continue to deny what is clear before you. Remember, Jesus is doing all these miracles. Remember, Jesus teaching the Holy Spirit is confirming and showing that Jesus is the son of God. But yet they're denying it. They're blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. If they continue to do that, they will never be forgiven. You see, a disciple is not just someone who knows the Bible, but someone who believes in Jesus, believes that he is the Son of God, believes he is the Saviour, the Rescuer sent from God. So being a Christian is more than having an interest in Jesus, and it's more than having a knowledge of the Bible. But Mark also shows us that it's more than having a family connection. There's another contrast in this passage, this time between the disciples and the family of Jesus, his mother and brothers. Now, you would think as his family, they would have some sort of claim on Jesus that surely they are OK. Surely they are part of his uh, group of disciples. But Jesus makes a striking statement. 
in verse 33. Who are my mother and my brothers, he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Now, we mustn't misunderstand this. This doesn't mean Jesus is disowning his mother and his brothers. It doesn't mean Jesus doesn't care for them. He loves his mother. He loves his brothers. But he's trying to teach a point. Just because you're my physical family, it doesn't mean you're my disciples. And if that was true for Jesus' mother and brothers, how much more is that true for us? Sometimes we can think we're Christians because our parents or grandparents were Christians. But Jesus says it doesn't work like that. Who are the disciples of Jesus? They are those who do the will of God. And what is that? Well, if we think back to the second video, right back at the beginning of Mark's gospel, we saw the the kind of thrust or summary of Jesus' teaching. He said, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. What's God's will for my life? What's God's will for your life? Well, it begins there with repentance, recognizing that we've lived Walking away from God, not not doing the things that he wants us to do. Recognising that and turning from that. And believing that Jesus is from God, that he's God's son, that he's God's rescuer. And committing our lives to him. What makes a Christian? That's a good question. But you know, it becomes a great question when we ask it of ourselves. Am I a Christian? Are you a Christian? From what we've seen in Mark's gospel... What would you say? Well, that's all we got time for today. Hopefully see you next time as we continue to go step by step through Mark's gospel.